So VHS 85, I did not see it. It streams on Shudder on Friday. Let's get to this. This is it. Shudder, October 6th. Eric Holmes, Bruce Perky, both of them are horror enthusiasts. I am assuming that they are both anthology enthusiasts as well. Let's start with who wants to tackle the description of it or what Eric or Bruce, you take the reins on how to describe VHS 85. It is uh, certainly an anthology. This one, more than the past VHSs I've seen, this one seems more kind of cohesive in a sense that all of them seem like actual found footage. You know, there's certain supernatural things that happen in it, but a lot of it actually feels like less staged and more like this is just footage they found and something weird is going on or something crazy is going on. Is that a good As, thing? The fact that it's more cohesive, is that a compliment or not? Yeah. And also I, I think it made it seem more dirty. Like this one seemed, I mean, bring up August underground, not that there's like a bunch of torture, although sometimes there is, this feels a lot more dirty than previous versions that I've seen a lot less set up and more like, a you found a, uh, VHS on the ground, picked it up, put it in, and oh, it's trash humpers. Like it, it, it's got that kind of feel to it. As far as like a standout one on this, this like uh, what, what was the last one? VHS, the the one with the dead stream guy. Yeah, I can lose like, track of the numbers. Or VHS eighty six. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like the the last one, the the last one, the one that the dead stream guy did was definitely the standout. This one. I'm having trouble finding a standout because to me, they all kind of blend together. And even the the interstitial stuff, it's hard sometimes to realize if you're in another of the segments because they kind of blend together and there's like the interstitial stuff is kind of messy. So it just kind of eventually get into there. And then you might be like a minute or two. Oh, this must be the next segment. I didn't realize. Okay. Well, Bruce, here's the thing. I'm looking at the director's. David Bruckner from The Night House, Hellraiser. That's a quality filmmaker. Scott Derrickson, The Black Phone, Sinister. Gigi Saul Guerrero. Don't know Saul Guerrero, but Bingo Hell, Culture Shock. And then Natasha Kermani, who I liked from Lucky. I don't know if you guys liked Lucky as much as I did, but I really enjoyed Lucky. And Mike Nelson from Wrong Turn. Eric was talking about they kind of blended together. Did they feel like a seamless blend for you and not non-distinctive? Or did you get a little bit more value from maybe certain sections of this movie? Well, hmm. I'm I'm kind of similar to Eric on this one. I think that more, uh, I guess a lot of the other ones have more peaks and valleys. And I think this maybe doesn't have quite as high a peaks as the last couple had. There might be a consistently more of a similar level. I don't think any of them are super, like, I don't think any of these are, are like all out clunkers, which I think the other ones would have a few that were clunkers. The, but I don't know if there's one of these that maybe is a star. A couple things I'll call out. So, first of all, I would agree the found footage side seems to really work, like, consistently throughout the uh, segments. The interstitial segment is the best of the last three because the last couple did not have good interstitial kind of connecting segments or they weren't very interesting. This one at least has some interesting stuff going on and kind of rounds out the the show. One other thing that I thought was interesting about this, well, first of all, the first segment, which is a bunch of, it's kind of the classic, a bunch of teenager types, early 20s types going out to camping at what uh, I wrote it down, uh, Lake Evil, apparently, because <laughs> they wrote, they found the sign on the ground that said, welcome to Lake Evil. They're going to Lake Evil, and then something happens to them that's not really related to the lake, but kind of is related to the lake. That's kind of your classic teens go out and something bad happens to them kind of story. But what really struck me about that one is a later segment directly links to that, which I did not expect. And I don't think I've seen that happen in any of the other VHS series. I could be wrong, but I don't remember that ever happening. That was kind of fun. And I really liked the last segment quite a bit too, which is Eric talked about them kind of feeling dirty and stuff. I think that was the most of that to me, where you have uh, VHS tapes of, let's say, crimes happening, being sent to the police. And there's kind of a twist to that story. But each of those tapes, like putting those tapes in and kind of watching them unfold, kind of remind me of Sinister a little bit, where you just find these tapes and each tape you see, you're like, oh, oh. Anytime you see a tape where it's this grungy VHS recording of someone walking into someone's house and you don't know what's going to transpire, that's always a little bit anxiety inducing. So I think overall, though, it was, I would say, solid, not bad, not great. That would kind of be where I fall. Bruce, maybe slightly disappointing because I know that you've appreciated previous iterations of the VHS franchise. Possibly, I think maybe? the last one, I would probably rate a little lower than this one. Although the last one had the great high of that one final one, I think was really, really good. But the overall, I don't think it quite struck me. 
The one before it, though, was the one I think that we really liked. All of us liked quite a bit that had uh, Ratma and all that stuff in it. That one, <laughs> that one was pretty great. That one that was, was memorable. This one is solid. Like this is to me, you know, it's Saturday night. It's October. You want something to watch with the friends, and you want it to be kind of solidly fun and not boring. You have new things happening all the time. I would put this right on. Eric, you agree with that? It's the the fact that it's just solid through and through this VHS eighty yeah. five and okay. Yeah, yeah. The like Bruce said, there's no peaks, no valleys. It's all co- like consi- it's all consistently good, I would say. And also, I believe Guar shows up for a couple frames. <laughs> they do. That's true. I, I had to rewind that. I'm like, wait, was that Balsack Jaws of Death? Oh, oh, oh. it was. <laughs> Last thing. Uh, also, the best uh, <laughs> the best payoff to an ongoing uh, clip of some '80s jazzer size kind of thing that keeps showing up. There's a great payoff to that bit too in this movie. I would also uh, mention that uh, they really lean into the uh, VHS camcorder aesthetic of this. And in doing so, it gets really shaky at times. So do not stand, uh, get far away from the screen. <laughs> I, I, I could or, not imagine watching this in the theater. I'd be throwing up like halfway through. <laughs> or put on your VR goggles and enjoy. No. <laughs> <laughs> i guess i'm just feeling oddly i'm feeling like tormenting people tonight apparently i like that i like the tormentor bruce bruce not bruce the butcher and bruce the tormentor now eric what is your rating on vhs 85 friday october 6 on shutter what is your rating i'd probably go like three and a half on this like i said there's no highs there's no lows but i do appreciate the consistency throughout and how it kind of feels of a whole and that you don't usually see in anthology so oh shit maybe go for it but yeah what i, I think 3.5 is, is definitely a recommend definitely a recommend but also like most anthologies if you're not liking this at the beginning you're probably not going to like the rest of it whereas most anthologies is if you don't like this stick around for the next one because you'll probably like that that doesn't really work here because because they're all kind of similar throughout. Bruce, I'm assuming that you have the same kind of rating, the same rating as Eric on this, maybe? Yeah, three and a half. That's exactly where I was going to rate it to. Okay, that's three and a half for VHS 85, reviewed by Eric Holmes and Bruce Berkey. I, whenever we review a Shutter film, there is a sort of a Marcel Proustian lament that I feel really horrible that even though we review so many movies, we started off with Bruce loving Shutter so much and we would cover, if I recall on Find Your Film, a lot more Shutter releases when we did Jallo. The more movies we have to see outside the Shutter realm, I have a feeling that Bruce is that person at a ferry looking at across the shores like oh I wish I was just watching so many Shudder movies Bruce you ever feel that way that you're, you don't spend enough quality time with Shudder because you have to see so many different movies every week no 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 I I mean I really do like the weird variety we get and I I <laughs> honestly getting we get clunkers to me at least once in a while and but that kind of that thing of just literally knowing nothing about a movie and putting it on and seeing what you get and sometimes it's an amazing movie. So I I like that a lot. This is Cinematics.